Hey YouTube, welcome to the final episode on trigonometry. Today we're going to look at how we use the Pythagorean identity of sine squared plus cos squared is 1 to certain problems. Last episode we did modifying the range, so make sure you check that out if you missed it. So just a quick recap of what we did last lesson. When we do solve trig equations, we follow these rules in order. So the first thing is we rearrange for our given function, so we rearrange for either sine, cos or tan, and then we modify the range if necessary. Then we apply either the inverse sine, cos or tan, we call that the primary value. Then we find the secondary value by applying the same rules every time. So for sine, 180 minus, cos, 360 minus, and tan, 180 plus the primary value. Then finally, once you've found the PV and SV, you add and minus 360 to find all the other values within the range. Then also we unmodify the range right at the very end. So let me show you how we apply it to certain questions involving squares. So we're going to deal with equations where we have a mixture of sine and cos being squared. Here we'll use our Pythagorean identity derived in our first trigonometry lesson. So just get right into it. Show that the equation 5 sine x equals 1 plus 2 cos squared x can be written in this form. So you can see when we solve trig in general, we obviously want to make sure it's all in terms of one function. So we notice here that we have a sine x and a cos squared x. So you have to decide, is it easier to change sine into cos or cos into sine? The general rule you want to follow is that the term that is not squared, so here's sine x, you want to convert everything into that because you can't do anything with sine x. So we're going to change cos squared into a sine function. And the way we do that is we have sine squared x plus cos squared x is 1. So cos squared x, when we subtract sine x from both sides, is 1 minus sine squared x. So we're going to replace it. So we have 5 sine x is 1 plus 2, 1 minus sine squared x. Then we're going to expand. Then that gives us 3. We're also going to move everything on the left side, on the right side, over to the left side. So minus 2 sine squared will become 2 sine squared. Then we have plus 5 sine x. Then we have 3 here, when we move it to the other side, it's minus 3 is 0, and that's now shown. Then it says solve for x being between 0 and 360, the equation we go in part a. Now to make your life easier, this is obviously a quadratic, so you want to rewrite it in such a way that it looks more explicitly like a quadratic. Now, there's many ways you can do this. You can let sine x equal y or u. Um, I do it in different ways. I prefer to use u, but another way you could do it is instead of saying sine squared, just say s squared, 5s minus 3 is 0. So you just remember the s represents sine. Now what we can do here is get our calculator, do our quadratic solve, and then see if this is a function that we can factorize. It is, but this is what you could do if you uh, don't want to think about it too much. So we have a half and minus 3. So we have s equals 1 half and s equals minus 3. You notice I've left a gap because you need to show that you have factorized. So what would the brackets have been? We're using the factor theorem here. We add the 3 over, so s plus 3 times by 2 would be 2s minus 1. All right, now we need to change back to sine. Remember, we're solving for x, right? Sine x is a half, and sine x is minus 3 then immediately you should notice that sine x can't equal minus 3. Sine is between 1 and minus 1. Then we're going to do inverse sine of a half. Now, without needing a calculator here, that'll be 30 degrees. That's your PV. Then how do you work out the secondary value for sine? We do 180 minus. So 180 minus the primary value is 150 degrees. Then we add in minus 360, but the range is between 0 and 360. So we can't do that. Our only two solutions are 30 and 150 degrees. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. If you're new here and you want more maths content, then please consider subscribing. If you're learning something, then hit that like button and comment down below to let me know what you want to learn next. I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Next question. Without much guidance, solve for x between 0 and 360, 3 sine squared plus 7 sine x equals cos squared minus 4. Give your answer to one decimal place where appropriate. So again, remember the trick. You you have options here, you have sine squared and cos squared, so which one do you change? You look at the term that is not squared, we're going to convert everything to that. So we need to change cos squared into sine squared. Now you should just know, without having to rewrite too much, that cos squared is 1 minus sine squared. If you rearrange for sine squared, then you would say that's 1 minus cos squared. 
So we have 3 sine squared x plus 7 sine x is cos squared, which is 1 minus sine squared minus 4. That minus sine squared, let's move it to this side. We have 1 minus 4, which is minus 3. When we move it to the other side, it's plus 3, is 0. Let's check the calculator here, see if this can be factorized. If not, we're going to pretend like we use the quadratic formula. So 4, 7, and 3. Okay, minus 3 quarters and minus 1. Sine x is minus 3 quarters and sine x is minus 1. So you may even get to a point where you don't even want to make the substitution of rewriting as s or u. Here, what would the bracket have been? It would have been sine x plus 1 is 0. And then here would have been 4 sine x plus 3. All right. I'm going to do the sine x is minus 1 first, just because the numbers will be easier. So when you do inverse sine of minus 1, it's going to give you minus 90 degrees. That's your primary value. Now you notice that that is not in the range. Let's just put a cross there. Then how do you work out the secondary value for sine? We're going to do 180 minus the primary value. When you do 180 minus minus 90, then that becomes 180 plus 90, which is 270 degrees. That's your secondary, which is in the range. Okay, then you have to decide, can you add in minus 360? Well, the primary value is not in the range. If you add 360 to it, you actually get 270 degrees. It's quite interesting that, you know, there's only one solution to this of x equaling 270 degrees. Between 0 and 360, usually, you don't have to draw this in the exam, by the way. Between 0 and 360, usually we have two solutions. So, for example, at a half, you have one and two solutions. But at minus one, when you read across, you actually only have one solution of 270. And it's um, a case of the primary value. The primary value's equivalent is also this, the secondary value as well. So that's why we only get one solution when generally we have two. Now here, we're gonna do inverse sine of minus three quarters, teen, or if we were in year 13 already. So you have minus 48.59 dot dot dot. That's your primary value, which is not in the range. So we're going to do 360. No, that is if I was doing cosine. 180 minus the primary value. Minus the primary value. We have 228.59 dot dot dot. I'm cramping this in, but that's our SV, which is in the range. So next thing, we're going to add 360 to the primary value. Now, one thing I should have done is I should have stored this. But this is, that's really more important when we do a radians. But when we take that and add 360, it's not going to be much of a problem. But if this ever happened, I would still recommend that you do inverse sine of minus 3 quarters and then add 360. So I'm going to do that anyway, just to show you good practice. Because if we were in the exam, we don't want to make any mistakes, right? So we take that and add 360. Yeah, and that gives us 311.4. So our only two solutions for this one are 228.6 to one decimal place and 311.4 to one decimal place. So overall, we have three solutions. Final question, solve for theta between zero and 360. Sine theta tan theta equals three cos theta plus two. Show each stage of your working. All right, so the first thing I notice is that we have tan. Yeah, generally speaking, we want to solve with sine and cosine and then make edits if we can. Tan theta, we know, is sine theta over cos theta. So we're going to convert everything into sine and cos. Then we're going to multiply. So we get sine squared theta over cos theta is 3 cos theta plus 2. Then we're going to multiply everything by cos theta. When we solve, we never like denominators, right? Now here we have to decide what is the conversion. Well, look at the singular term, cos theta. So we're going to change sine squared this time. So sine squared is 1 minus cos squared, which is 3 cos squared theta plus 2 cos theta. Move everything over to this side. Now again, let's check our calculator. Okay, so again, not not a, well, it's not a quadratic we can factorize. So what we're going to do is we're going to say that cos theta is minus 1 plus root 5 over 4. 
the other one will be cos theta is minus 1 minus root 5 over 4. Now we should store these, it just makes life a bit easier. So this, we're just going to press store A. And then the other one, we're going to store that as B. So it's going to make our inverse, instead of doing inverse cos of typing all that in, we've stored it as A and B. Now what would we do here is we make it look like we did the quadratic formula without having to type it all in. So cos theta is minus B plus or minus B squared minus 4AC over 2A. Okay, now we get to what the real business is. So we're going to go back to our normal. So we're going to go inverse cos of what I stored as A. It's a really nice number here, 72. And that's our PV. How do you work out SV for cosine? We do 360 minus the primary value. The answer, 2A8, 2A8. That's our SV. Now for the other one, we're going to do inverse cos of what I stored as B. All these calculator tricks kind of just save you a bit of time, right? Theta is 144, which is your primary value. Then you're going to do 360 minus the primary, minus your answer here, 260. You can see that the range is between 0 and 360. So since all of these are in the range between 0 and 360, you don't need to add a minus 360. So our solutions are 72, 144, 216, and 288 to give us our final answer. So that is trigonometry for year 12. And really, these key principles you're actually taking to year 13 as well. It's just in year 13, we deal with more functions such as uh, cosec, cot, um, and what? Cosec, cot, and sec. These are all the reciprocal functions. But then at the end of the day, you get to eventually sine, cos, or tan, and then you just do the same rules. So these are really important for you to remember for next year. So in summary, when we solve trig equations, we follow these rules in order. And as you notice through the episodes, we've kind of increased the amount of things that we need to consider. So step one, is we use either sine squared or cos squared is 1 and or tan x is sine over cos to convert our equation into one function and factorize if necessary. Once we rearrange our given function, modify the range if necessary, apply the inverse function to either sine cos or tan, we call that the PV, uh, find the secondary values by sine 180 minus uh, cos 360 minus tan 180 plus, remember they don't change. Then once we've done that, we add or minus 360 to find other values in the range and you unmodify the range at the very end if you did modify the range in the beginning. And that's it, guys. That is solving trig. So this is quite a comprehensive you know, set of episodes to show you how you do everything. So now you should have the right tools to solve all your problems. Now stay tuned because I'm going to be moving on to differentiation. I look forward to starting it. And guys, if you learned anything, please hit that like button and subscribe if you want more maths content. I'll see you in the next episode. Peace.